we have some we have some concerns concerning uh, the technique of uh, high dose rate brachytherapy uh, in breast cancer patients and we we'd like to ask you we take this opportunity to ask you some questions how you are doing as a as a surgeons uh, and this may be the main question for us because you know, we would talk about clipping of the bed and uh, this is no very important part of our job i'd like to show you next three slides not to explain you how it is uh, how it must be done because it is your work but in order to remind you that we know your publications and we know the technique which was uh, the, uh, which was born in uh, budapest uh, and now is very fastly growing in the world but we have some we have some questions we have some uh, uncertainties um, when we perform this uh, when we perform this technology when we bring it into the real uh, everyday life this is how it must be done and everything is very clear we must know where the tumor was at the beginning i only again remind that we know some uh, key, key points we must see the the scar which is not always possible uh, i'd like to underline that we are talking about closed surgery first of all even my first slide was not uh, the um, result of closed surgery but it is exception in our institute and uh, this is how we are doing how we're drawing the uh, gtv uh, what we have in our real time in, in our real life this is the patient which was not far ago in our department and this is very simple case where, where everything is very clear you see the seroma which is uh, existed in about one two percent of our patients not more you see that the clips are on the on the border of seroma which is very logical and in this case of course we know how to plan how what to irradiate and uh, how we can manage this patient but unfortunately unfortunately this situation is not uh, everyday uh, case and not very often because in some cases we have um, the situation like on this slide on the left it is the patient with um, uh, clips already on the right it is uh, ct which was done before operation fortunately in our everyday practice we are, we have the opportunity to use ct for brachytherapy planning because all all women uh, underwent spec ct examinations during staging and we take this we we take this uh, CT from spec CT um, examinations and we are able to 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 to, uh, to estimate the position of the tumor and even we are able to fuse uh, preoperative CT with post-operative CT of course in planning it is very helpful you see in this in this woman uh, the clips and the tumor are more or less in the same position and it is also not very uh, complex uh, problem to to plan this lady you we also very perfectly see the scar uh, and of course we during uh, gtv drawing we include in the tumor all clips except the clip which is uh, lying on the muscle because it is only for positioning and uh, we try to include uh, the whole scar uh, till the level of the of the tumor uh, of course we are sparing the uh, the skin but uh, this is uh, we tried also to make some video because it is not easy to understand the position uh, from uh, from the from the CT scans uh, like like slides like uh, images but I, I don't know why the film is not starting we, we will try in uh, in this patient it would be important and this is another case you see on the left uh, on the left is the tumor on the right is uh, the clips and uh, here we see some discrepancies in the position and in this case of course we start to think we are trying to include uh, all uh, clips in our everyday practice and also 
the projected position of the tumor which was before operation. And in this case, of course, probably it would be possible. But uh, mm, what is the question for us that all clips are uh, located very deeply. And I'd like to put, to put your attention to this fact because it would be also in relation with our further questions. In, the, in this case, if you would look on the left slide, uh, and it is not a rare situation, that's why we decided to discuss this. You see that the, the tumor was uh, in, the, mm, in the upper quadrant, upper inner quadrant. Uh, and if you would look uh, on the marks, which are on the right, the, the, the allocation is about five centimeters, not f about four, five centimeters lower. And we can say that the marks, are, the clips are located in the mm, lower quadrant of the inner, inner lower quadrant. And in this case, of course, it is a question for us what to draw, because we have the scar, which is located also uh, near to the clips. We have the clips. And if you would try uh, to to use the projection of the tumor to include it in the volume. The volume would be very, very big. It would be huge. And we would, uh, we would switch from the uh, partial blister radiation or booster radiation to nearly the whole blister radiation. And this is the question for us. And the question would be, well, I think that it would be possible now to show you. I'm not sure that it is this patient. But you see, we are trying to, to switch from one image to another. Now you see the tumor. And here you see the clips which are located um, no, completely not in the same position. Not completely, but a little bit in the, not in the same position. They are much deeper. And they are... Mm, uh, then it is some kind of mism mismatch between uh, position of the tumor and the position of the marks. And this is the video of this lady, which we discussed uh, a few minutes ago, when the position of the tumor and the position of the marks are, uh, differ significantly. I can't say that it is very often, but about 20% of patients, I think that it would be for 20% of, of our patients, it would be the typical situation. And uh, the main question which we want to discuss with you, the technology of uh, the technology of clips placing. Maybe you have some kind of special rules uh, which help you to which help you to to be accurate in all cases and not have discrepancies with the with with the radiation oncologist and another question it is also concerning this uh, concerning these margins because uh, in this case of course it would be no really impossible to to respect the rules of margin placing we are not we have very big discrepancies in the position of the tumor bed uh, if we would uh, if we would determine it with the help of the um, clips and if you would try to, you know, to make some correlation with the position before the operation of the tumor. And of course, it, it is completely impossible in this case to, to construct the margin uh, with the help of pathological report. Because in our practice, usually in these cases, we are taking two centimeter uh, margin. Sometimes when it is very big volume, we are reducing it, uh, reducing it to one centimeter. What you can say from your, from, from, from your everyday practice? What can be the advice? Hello, do you hear me? Perfectly thank well. You. Okay, thank you very much. So tell the truth, partial breast irradiation starts with the surgeon. So uh, if uh, they put uh, the clips in wrong position and not so uh, accuracy as, as, as we uh, need, uh, the radiation treatment won't be uh, precise. So uh, I will uh, ask uh, later uh, Dr. Matrai or uh, clip 
uh, implantation uh, protocol. He, he will uh, tell you uh, about this. But uh, I know your, your problem. Sometimes we see that uh, some clips are in appropriate position, far from the uh, scar, far from the uh, primary tumor bed. Uh, Professor Polgar uh, went to the operation theater many times and, and checked and uh, asked the surgeons uh, how to put uh, the uh, clips in, in the right position to help uh, us uh, to uh, good uh, target uh, definition. Uh, so this is the first thing. Second, we usually use the CVS score, the cavity visibility score. And uh, if we uh, don't see the cavity very well, we never do uh, partial breast irradiation. And we do this uh, very, very strict. So if it's not safe, we use whole breast irradiation and not, not try to uh, give uh, partial breast irradiation in, in, in any uh, uh, any time. So uh, I can tell you that uh, it, it was also a problem uh, at our institute, but nowadays we have a good working connection. We can ask the surgeon how to put the, the, the clips, where was the tumor, uh, exactly in which quadra uh, quadrant, and if we see big discrepancy uh, between the preoperative mammogram and, and the postoperative CT, uh, we, we use whole breast irradiation. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. So actually, uh, hi, friends. Uh, my name is Otto Matri, and uh, uh, actually, our protocol is according to the recommendation of uh, Philip Portman. So we use uh, uh, as a standard seven clips. We place three of them uh, on the uh, on the major pectoral muscle, so on the base of the tumor bed, mm -hmm. and other four clips to the to the to the tumor bed to the to the parenchyma walls. Uh, so minimum of seven clips is necessary uh, to mark the tumor bed. And this is our everyday routine. We can talk about two era, the era of uh, classical breast conserving surgery and open cavity surgery, because of uh, after that, the, that, that uh, classical seroma uh, is uh, often visible. And that was, our, um, that was a problem of ours here in our institute as well. We started uh, to use uh, oncoplastic uh, breast conserving surgical techniques uh, six years before, six, seven years before. Uh, and um, just before that era, our uh, standard technique was the classical breast conserving surgery. So open cavity was left behind, and that was uh, much easier visibility, visible for our colleagues from the adjunct radiotherapy than uh, if you uh, readmit uh, the parenchyma pillars around the, the tumor bed. That's the way we have uh, much less, significantly less uh, uh, seromas and uh, the, the former tumor bed is uh, sometimes not so significantly visible than with, with the open cavity uh, classical breast conserving surgery. So I recommend to use uh, more clips, a uh, minimum of seven pieces, to place the clips on the, on the major pectoral muscle, uh, three of them as base of the tumor bed, and other four clips to the parenchyma walls, parenchyma pillar, pillars round around. Um, all the, almost all the, the, the oncoplastic techniques uh, are able to adhere the, the neighborhooding uh, uh, pillars. But I, there are, there are so absolute, such kind of an oncoplastic technique doesn't exist if you have a, a, your, your upper outer pole and you bring it to the inner outer quadrant or inner inner quadrant, so lower inner quadrant, that such, such kind of a situation doesn't exist. So even though the clips should be placed after, just after the excision of the, of the tumor bed, not after the uh, uh, remodelation of the, of the parenchyma gland. So, and of course we have, as mentioned by uh, um, 
mentioned by Dr. May Saros, a very co close cooperation is necessary uh, for those uh, patients, um, uh, even uh, after the, 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 the tumor bed localization, or we are doing the, some other cases together, even intraoperatively, brachytherapy cases, uh, when after loading uh, tubes are placed in the tumor bed as well. So close cooperation is, uh, is very important in such a situation. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Zoltan. Yes, I think it's very important. And nowadays, it's surgeon uh, has two more uh, radiotherapists, and uh, radiologist uh, has to be surgeon because uh, nowadays it's real true. For then, uh, tumor bed uh, changed the place uh, there it was before operation, and uh, on co breast conserving therapy. For example, 20 years ago, is the different situation on oncoplastic surgeries uh, today, because uh, it's it's real true for when the bed of tumor uh, after operation have three or maybe four different place of new uh, growing uh, new breast cancer uh, new breast, because uh, I think there uh, this table in the last uh, slide of presentation my friend sergey uh, show very simple situation uh, and uh, today we have different result uh, after our operation i think it's it's very important that our radiologists image uh, what we do in the operation room and so, some view for maybe yes exactly i agree Okay. Fully agree. Thank so, you. Uh, actually, we were very lucky because we had a great support for our, from our uh, uh, radiotherapy center uh, uh, to our uh, oncoplastic, uh, not only the breast conserving, to our oncoplastic era. That was the same situation with immediate, immediate post mastectomy breast reconstruction. We had uh, we, our, our standard is the expander to implant change to the delayed immediate technique, but even though uh, for bilateral cases uh, um, and so on and so on, we had such kind of uh, really new situations in the in the last six years, and together we were able to solve these problems. So most important that the patient should have the uh, accurate and adequate uh, adjuvant uh, therapy and treatment. So. Um, we had the same situation uh, even by uh, by immediate post mastectomy breast reconstruction uh, as well. 